The USS Discovery's design is deeply rooted in Star Trek history. It's a product of two prolific production illustrators. Here, we'll cover the creative process that took Discovery from a crude sketch on paper to the CG model we see on the show. There's plenty to cover, so let's get to it. This is the concept and design of the USS Discovery. Any discussion on Discovery's design needs to start with production illustrator John Eaves. He currently has the record for working on the most Star Trek productions dating all the way back to Star Trek V in 1989. During his time with Star Trek, his most visible contributions were the designs for the Enterprise B and later the E. He even survived the reboot transition and worked on all three of the Bad Robot Star Trek movies. So he's worked on five Star Trek TV series and eight movies, so resume, check. When then Discovery producer Brian Fuller brought Eves on board, he was given the Ralph McQuarrie concept drawings from the aborted 1970s Planet of the Titans Star Trek movie production. These renderings were initially intended to be the new Starship Enterprise succeeding the original 1966 design. As many of you may know, McQuarrie was a prolific movie illustrator who worked on Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Raiders of the Lost Ark, E.T., Cocoon, Battlestar Galactica, and... Am I leaving anything out? Oh yeah, batteries not included. And Star Wars. There's definitely similarities with the Star Destroyers. Before we continue on Discovery, the McQuarrie design resulted in a few crude study models that would later appear in Star Trek III and The Next Generation. Anyway, Eves would use this as a starting point for what would become the USS Discovery. In a broad sense, this design was, well, broad. You can immediately see how flat and wide it is. Aside from that, it still has all the usual elements of a Starfleet ship. It's got a saucer, a neck, a drive section, and two warp nacelles. So Eves just colored it black and cashed his paycheck. So that's the video. Please like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, buy my used mattress on Craigslist. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Oh wait, I missed some things. Eves turned to the XB-70 Valkyrie prototype bomber from the 1950s. As you can see, it shares a lot of the characteristics from the Ralph McQuarrie design. In fact, you can almost just slap a saucer section on this thing and call it a day. This line of thought led to the show's Starfleet ship classes being named after pilots from experimental aircrafts. The Discovery is a Crossfield class ship, which is named after Scott Crossfield of the US Navy. He was the first human to fly at twice the speed of sound. Here are some early concept sketches where Eves experiments with different profiles and proportions. In this one, he kept the aft section flat with the shuttle bay at dead center. At this point, I'd like to point out that the sphere bridge section appeared to be present fairly early on. This is a possible nod to the discovery from 2001. Notice here how the nacelles are cylindrical like the original Enterprise. However, they're turned backwards to where the widest point is in the rear and they taper as you move forward. They're also parallel with the drive section. Another concept had the aft section angled forward. There are also pylons that separate the nacelles from the drive section, whereas the final design has the nacelles directly connected on both ends of the drive section. The nacelles are also positioned on top of the pylons, giving the ship a greater sense of height. Moving to this concept, it plays around with the jagged profile. You can also see the impulse exhausts located on the saucer section, similar to Eve's design for the Enterprise E. And this sketch bears the most resemblance to the final design with the aft section angled backwards and the nacelles parallel to the hull. Here you can see the influence of the XB-70 with how the pylons are angled downwards like the wings on the plane. There was experimentation with the main deflector dish as well. Early on you can see a more traditional circular dish. Later, this concept has the dish recessed into the hull, somewhat similar to the Enterprise E. This one also features bizarre collectors similar to the Enterprise D. As the design process moved forward, you can see the ship's final profile begin to show through. The main areas of focus that Eves continued to work on were the warp nacelles. Fuller wanted them squared off, 
though they were still experimenting with having them angled downwards or parallel to the hull. The nacelle design may seem insignificant, but it really helps define the profile of the ship. The Enterprise D had compact, forward-oriented nacelles, whereas the E had long, swept-back nacelles. When it came to the color scheme on Discovery, it was Fuller who came up with the bronze color. The closest any previous Starfleet ship... Starfleet? Ugh, I'm not recording that again. The closest any previous Starfleet ship came to bronze was the NX-01, which fictionally existed about a century earlier, so it fits in bridging the gap between the NX-01 and the original series. And we know how that turned out. Hello, everybody. Would you like to try? All of their work thus far culminated in the 2016 reveal trailer where this version of the ship appeared. It has a few differences from how the ship ends up looking once the show premiered. However, this isn't the first time we've seen an early draft of a ship appear in Star Trek marketing. Back with Star Trek The Motion Picture, the Phase 2 version of the ship appeared on the teaser poster. This ship in large part is very similar to the final design, though the nacelles are shorter and oriented forward. The ship name and registry number also evolved over the design process. In the reveal trailer, the font is very similar to that used on the Kelvin Timeline Enterprise. The final design would use the same typeface that was used in the motion picture and onwards. At this point, it's unclear why Fuller was so obsessed with the nacelles. Up till then, Eves didn't know if the spore drive story element was present while Fuller was the showrunner, but evidence suggests that he had plans for something special with the ship's propulsion. In October 2016, Fuller departed the production, and two months later, in December, Eves was informed of the spore drive story element. At some point around this time, the nacelles were also redesigned to be swept back and longer. When you take a look at this near final rendering, you can see the reaction control thrusters along the rim of the saucer section. This has been a staple of Starfleet ships since the motion picture. Hull livery has been a staple of Starfleet ships since the original Enterprise. They're used to signify that a ship is Starfleet. The prominent livery has been some sort of Starfleet pennant along the side or top of the hull. In this render, you can see that present with this pinstripe along the ship's spine leading down towards the rear. Eventually, that was removed, as the near final design on the show lacks any sort of Starfleet livery. The only thing on the hull of that ship is the name and registry number. Along the way, other artists were brought in to work on how the rings of the saucer section would rotate. At this point, the rings were still covered with this rib design, similar to the USS Franklin from Star Trek Beyond. Oh, and if you care to know, only the surfaces of the ring spin. If you take a close look, you can see that the windows stay still. As the design process neared the end, illustrator Tom Pringle handled the paint scheme. He added this prominent stripe design to the dorsal side of the drive section. He'd previously done work on Bioshock 2, Halo 4, and this Star Trek game that was okay, I guess. Well, maybe not. I don't know. I have no idea how I'm going to end this video. So that's the video. At some point I'll have a video on the finished version of the ship, but for now, the creative process that went into this design is fascinating enough for its own video. In any case, I'd like to thank these folks for helping support the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.